Hello folks, it is me, Matt Smith. Hope you're having a wonderful day. I appreciate you stopping by on today's video. We're talking a little bit more about armoured fighting vehicle technology. Now I have touched on this a little bit in the past before and my opinions and thoughts on it. And today I thought I'd finally make my overall uh, firm, solid stance slash opinion on this technology. Now, nothing new here, folks. Rubber tracks have been around for quite some time. They've been on civilian application and military application track vehicles, and uh, it's starting to turn into a bit of a game changer around the world. Now, if any of you have been in a world where uh, you've been involved with armored fighting vehicles and track vehicles, you know that tracks are inherently, um, one, a lot of fun to drive around on, two, very good at going off-road, and three, a pain in the ass to work on when it comes to repair, overhaul, maintenance, and damage control. Now, of course, there is the debate of what is better, rubber tracks or metallic tracks. Of course, they both have their own inherent advantages and disadvantages. I personally have always operated in a armoured fighting vehicle that has metallic tracks. The Warrior 512, 513, 510, Challenger 2, Krav, you name it, all have metal tracks with rubber pads, track pads installed, which help inherently for a number of reasons, and we're going to talk a little bit about those reasons later on when we talk about the rubber tracks themselves. But a lot of you have been asking, Matsmus, why do you hate rubber tracks so much? What is your beef against them? And honestly, I don't have any beef against them. I actually respect the technology a lot. And now that we're starting to see it being showcased a lot more, I'm finding out a lot more information, doing my research, finding facts and statistics about this kind of technology on our fighting vehicles and my opinion on them actually has changed quite a bit. Now tracked vehicles offer superior mobility on rough terrain that's inherently quite important when you're using these types of vehicles they need to get everywhere and all over the place however anyone who has ridden inside of one of these vehicles will never forget their first experience being inside one at high speed due to the vibration guys and the noise coming from the tracks it's something you'll always remember as an armored fighting vehicle crew member it is loud it is very very vibrational on your body and your bone structure it's not a great time especially on a road move after a long while especially when I was on the uh, range roads in Germany and the Warrior 512, a very quick vehicle. When you have tracks running at that speed in metallic form, even with rubber pads on, it really does get to your bones and it really hurt my ears with my headset on when I was driving, but uh, that's just me being a baby. The vibration inside a tracked armor vehicle has really adverse effects on the crew's health and fatigue. It does tire you out, guys. Now, of course, you're probably thinking that's a really minor thing, but it's not. There's a thing called whole body vibration, which is witnessed by crew members. It refers to the vibrations transmitted to the body via a supporting surface, such as the legs, on the gas pedal, or even you just holding the yoke like on the Warrior. Uh, short term, it can actually cause a bit of discomfort, like nausea, headaches, and stuff. Long term, it can cause severe problems, like lumbar spine problems, uh, nerve connections, all that sort of stuff. Stuff, so it really does actually take its effect. In an enclosed cabin like the crew compartment in an armoured fighting vehicle, vibrations and running gear run right through you, and the army really doesn't care, for the older vehicles anyway, about the way you feel inside the vehicle. If you can get there safely um, and able to engage the enemy, they don't particularly care too much. Uh, Travelling inside the armoured vehicle on steel tracks can really shake you to the point of exhaustion, and that definitely takes its effect on the crew. So rubber band tracks, what are they? Well, band tracks, sometimes referred to as rubber endless tracks, differ obviously from steel tracks with rubber pads. Most rubber tracks are formed around a basic carcass or a belt. The carcass includes an endless belt-shaped rubber-like elastic member and a number of core bars, usually a very strong metal. Which fascinated me because until I did the research, I didn't actually know there was actually metal in there. I just thought it was solid rubber all the way around like a giant elastic band. Rubber band tracks are not new, and it was started by the Hanglugs, now BAE Huglands, in 2003 of the BV-206 armoured fighting vehicle, one of which I had a lot of personal experience in in Afghanistan with the Royal Marines commandos when they were supporting us in the Wadis in Helmand province. The Norwegian army started deploying the M113 vehicles with the Sausi band tracks to Afghanistan in 2004. The band tracks that replace the T-130 tracks on the M113 weigh only 45% of steel tracks. Now you know where I'm going with this guys, reducing weight is obviously going to help the vehicle immensely, whether it be the power pack having to get that little bit of extra juice because it's not having to pull so much weight, or just the overall vehicle weight being reduced, and that's quite important. The Danish army follow the Norwegians with their upgraded M113G vehicles with the Raphael Enhanced Applique Armour Kit and the band tracks in 2009, and again they were deployed to Afghanistan. Okay, so what lessons have we learned about these tracks? Well, thanks to the Nordic countries of Denmark and Norway, the band tracks have proved themselves as a very strong alternative to the conventional linked steel tracks. 
And the best thing is, guys, is they are proven not in just a controlled test environment, but in real-life combat operations like Afghanistan. The operational testing has shown many interesting results, of which I'm going to eat my own words here and say I'm very impressed with. Vibrational levels were reduced by 50 to 65% by a British MOD study on the CVRT reconnaissance vehicle, with band tracks provided 50% reduction overall. That is pretty impressive. Even though the vehicle is out of service, that's quite good, guys, for vibration levels. And like I said, it's quite important to the crew. The noise levels were also reduced to 6 to 10 decibels. And this study was made on the track bands of M113s and showed the internal noise levels reducing to heavy track cabin noise levels dramatically, to the point of which uh, they basically said when they were driving along it was almost like being in a car. Of course, band tracks are 30% lighter than steel tracks, which increases the operational fuel efficiency of the vehicle and overall power. The tracks, surprisingly, are a little more durable than steel tracks when a study was shown on M113s that their lifetime doubled that of the T130 steel tracks. Now that's subjective to the kind of power plant and vehicle that's using those tracks. I can almost guarantee Challenger 2 would probably not last as long uh, than it would uh, with rubber bands to steel, but I don't know. We'd have to look at some studies if they did some. They can also provide better traction by being wider than steel tracks thanks to their weight advantage. Of course, if you're reducing the overall weight of the track, you have more room to increase the width like you're seeing here. However, that does create inherent problems with working with final drives and the gear train to provide that power, something of which I know a little bit about being a tank mechanic in my day. There is a lot of ground pressure level reduction being the wider tracks too, which allows it to go even cross worse terrain than what steel tracks would go across, which again gives it a little bit more operational capability of going across some of the most disgusting muddy pits you can ever imagine. Band tracks are more friendly to road surfaces, causing no significant damage to the road. And you're probably wondering, Matsumus, who cares? Like, they're tanks. Well, honestly, governments care. Uh, the German military and the German government cared when we used to take our entire armoured convoy down the raid road in Germany, and those are the roads that really don't last long when it comes to an entire armoured group going across them. It costs the taxpayer a lot of money to refix those things, uh, so that's something that you've really got to take into consideration. Rubber tracks don't have that problem. I'm sure you've all seen that video of the uh, repair vehicle, the leopard repair vehicle or bridge vehicle that churned up the cobbles uh, outside the barracks in that parade that time. Now, of course, you're probably wondering, well, Matsumas, you're giving all the positives of these things. There's got to be some negatives. Of course, there definitely is. There's some significant advantages, but it definitely has drawbacks. In conditions of terrain with sharp stones, they are more prone to damaging than the conventional tracks especially the endless band tracks that are significantly more difficult to replace. Under combat conditions, replacing a band track would be extremely difficult for the crew. This is where my biggest gripe slash problem comes with rubber band tracks. Look folks, I've done a lot of track repair in my life, more than I care to admit, because it is such a savage, savage activity. Uh, and this kind of technology is fantastic. When it fails, you better have a good replacement system to get this thing fixed up. Now, there is some interesting ways of getting these repaired. Uh, I've actually found some footage which I thought was rather interesting of how these things get repaired. So let's have a quick review of it. Now, the one thing you've really got to take into consideration here, folks, is with a rubber band track, unlike a metallic track, you cannot replace just segments of the track and connect it back up. You literally have to do a patch job and try your best 
to connect the two ends of the band back together. Now this actual patch job is literally just a chunk of the track that has come off. If the entire track had come off, or large portions of the track, you would have a very difficult time trying to repair this because you would run out of kits. Whereas if you have track pads, you have the capability of using multiple different tracks or track links from other vehicles. It's very, very helpful to share the love between other crews. Of course, then the other crews have to get involved and they hate you. Uh, but this is an interesting way to fix it. They're basically using steel rods and uh, wire rope to connect up the loose ends and to try and bring in that track back to formidable use. Now, this is a repair on an endless band track, otherwise known as a continuous band track, but there are solutions that have been put in place to try and mitigate this kind of problem. Dale, or Dale, D-I-E-H-L, uh, decided that they were having real problems trying to store endless rubber tracks and started to look into so-called segmented rubber band tracks, very similar to metallic tracks in their own specific chunks of segments. Dale rubber band tracks provided the separation points so they could be disassembled into four manageable sections. Thus, the assembly on the vehicle was pretty easy to do and transportation and storage of them was considerably improved. The new rubber band tracks can even be replaced in the field under operational conditions in a fraction of the time previously required. Furthermore, individual replacement segments can be transported on the vehicle so the vehicle can keep mobile itself. Of course, we still do that with metallic tracks, having them on the side. Uh, the Russians like to use them as uh, spare armor, but uh, that's another story. Another problem with rubber band tracks, folks, is of course stretching. Now, in different environments and different conditions, these tracks have their own different properties, just like steel tracks do. When you're working with rubber, extreme heat or extreme cold starts to take its effect a little bit on this kind of technology. Of course, the rubber is very very strong very very durable and able to withstand high temperature conditions and extreme cold conditions but it still makes its effect when you heat up rubber to extreme conditions like the desert or traveling along roads at high speeds the rubber band wants to expand and get bigger and therefore you do risk potentially throwing a track. This is why if you're going to install rubber band tracks on armored fighting vehicles, there needs to be a hydraulic track tensioner, just like the Chanter 2, that can allow you to continue putting pressure on that track depending on the type of tension that it may or may not have. I'd be interested to see the kind of technology they have in place to maintain that tension all the time, varying uh, with the kind of conditions that the track's placed in. But definitely something to think about as a vehicle driver is, are my tracks gonna stay on this vehicle if we start going at high speeds in the desert or on a hot road somewhere? I think for the most part it will, but it's just something to think about in the background. Overall, band tracks, thanks to the continuous development, are really game-changing armored fighting vehicles, folks. They are. And I was a little skeptical at first when I heard about these things, uh, but the more research I do, it really does make more sense. For armored fighting vehicles in the 15 to 30 ton range, and for some roles like reconnaissance where vibration and noise levels are very important, I really do think band tracks would be a really good capability multiplier. However, for main battle tanks, I just don't think we're quite there yet. I would much rather see heavy-duty steel tracks rolling around on a Challenger 2 than rubber bands, uh, because I think that the capability of being blown up uh, is a lot easier to be re replaced and take a good hit than a rubber band track would. That's just my perspective on that, take it as you wish. So folks, I'd love to hear your opinion on rubber band tracks. Let me know of anything that I've probably missed. I'm, no, I'm sure there's many points that you guys are going to send to me in the comments and sometimes I like to leave it open for debate and to allow you guys to throw your own little tidbits in there and things that I've missed because it gets a good conversation started in the comments section. Folks, if you enjoyed today's video, I'd really appreciate you leave me a comment and a like. Uh, if you would like to support my channel i really would appreciate you go check out my patreon account or my paypal link in the link description box below and if you want to come have a chat with me maybe you want to kind of voice your opinion on rubber band tracks or metallic tracks personally then come chat with me on my discord channel it is in the box also download the software create an account log into the legion and come have a chat with me i'm on there most of the time via text and voice so uh, yeah come have a chat and hang out hope you enjoyed the video folks have a wonderful day and Bye-bye.